for studying for the priesthood. Ordained at 28, he went on to become one of Spain's most popular preachers. At 42, Anthony founded a religious institute of missionaries, known popularly as the Coalitions. Appointed to head the much-neglected Archdiocese of Santiago, Cuba, he began its reform by almost ceaselessly preaching and hearing confessions. He incurred widespread opposition for preaching against unmarried persons living together and for giving instructions to black slaves. When a hired assassin slashed his face and wrist, Anthony responded by getting the would-be assassin's death sentence commuted to a prison term. All his life, Anthony was interested in the Catholic press. Residing with the Spanish colony in France, he founded the Religious Publishing House, a major publishing venture, and wrote or published 200 books and pamphlets. A staunch defender of the doctrine of papal infallibility in Vatican I, he died in 1870 and was canonized in 1950. There's more about the saints along with inspiration and Catholic resources at our website, saintoftheday.org. From Franciscan Media, this has been Saint the Day. Thank you for your kind attention. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. To gather here this morning, let us seek God's strength and peace. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ, have, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You feed us in your body and blood, Christ, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Heal the sick, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who for the evangelization of people strengthened the bishops at Anthony Marie Claret with admirable charity and long suffering, 
Grant through his intercession that seeking the things that are yours, we may earnestly devote ourselves to win our sisters and brothers for Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he may grant you, in accord with his riches in his glory, to be strengthened with the power through his Spirit in the inner self, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him, who is able to accomplish far more than all we ask or imagine by the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-stringed lyre, chant his praises. The Your earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. For upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right of the kindness of the Lord. The earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. But the plan of the Lord stands forever. The design of his heart through all generations. Bless the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen for his own inheritance. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. But see... The eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. The earth earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with the Spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, how I wish we were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two, two against three, Father will be divided against his son, a son against his father, a mother against her daughter, and daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. (laughs) 
how this prophetic, this gospel is today. The visions that exist, blue versus red, red versus blue, Democrat versus Republican, Republican versus Democrat, left versus right, right versus wrong, and so on and so on. What are we to do? Some people want me to preach, to vote for, to preach who to vote for. <laughs> and mainly to vote who against. I don't know that you want me to do that. Nor do I think I should. We value your life. <laughs> I'm okay with dying early, it's okay. I already told the funeral director to make, make me look much thinner in the caskets. So don't fill me up, I told him. Division has always existed within families, friendships, but it seems never more apparent than today. What are we to do? And the sad part is, we often focus on the division. Who to vote for? Left versus right, right versus left. Somehow thinking, and I've said this many times to you all before, somehow thinking that they're going to magically, an elected official is going to magically make our life better. We have to do the work. What unites us is right here. What brings us together is Christ himself. That's who we are called to follow. That's who we are called to be united around. That's who we're called to talk about much more frequently than candidate A or candidate B. And look how much energy we are putting into conversations about Republican or Democrat. Come November 6th, I hope it is a landslide one way or the other, so there's no understanding of who won or who lost. But we will move on. I hope not as Democrats or Republicans, but more as Christian people that are called to do God's work, not the work of a Democratic or Republican party. And sadly, too often, we get wrapped up every four years, well, it seems like every other year now, <laughs> around this very issue of who's going to win. Jesus was very clear in today's gospel. I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. That doesn't mean he wanted utter destruction like in a forest fire, but that it's alive and full of life. Are we those people who say, you know what, I am so alive with Jesus, I can't stand it. We've met people like that, and sometimes they drive us crazy because there's so much Jesus coming out of them. It's like, put them back in. Just <laughs> As Catholics, sometimes we're to the opposite. We don't tell people who we are. As I was listening to the radio today, there's less um, yard signs for politicians on either side. And there's a lot of people who have said, I don't want to have to have the division of someone, or one of my neighbors fighting with me about my sign in my yard. But we didn't have that issue as Christians. We shouldn't be quiet about who we, should, who we are supporting. 
Christ, not our political party. People should know that we are Christian. Not because we walk around with some statue or put a statue of Mary on top of our car or something like that, but because of the life we live. The things we are involved with, the ministries that we serve, that's how people should know that we are a Christian. In the conversations that we have, what do we lead with in our conversations today? Is it Christ or Trump or Harris? Or see what they said? Did you see what so and so said? Oh, I'm so tired of hearing that because one says something stupid, the other one says something is just as stupid. <laughs> What are we to do? We can fight about the divisions and fight about the things that we don't agree on as far as who is the right person to run, help run the country or lead the country. Or we can say, you know what? I'm focused on Christ. That unites us. We're all here for that reason. In this room on a Thursday morning at 9 o'clock this Thursday, right? Thursday morning, <laughs> 9 o'clock. That's why we're here. We're not here because of who we're voting for. We're here because of who we love and who loves us. And who will sustain us November 6th, November 7th, November 8th, 2025, 2026, and so on and so on. That's the person we're supposed to be on fire with. That's the person we should lead with. That's the person we should be having conversations more and more about is God himself. Not getting involved with all the rhetoric that goes on. How many of us have CNN or Fox News on all day long? Those of you who are not shaking your head probably are the ones. Well, the ones shaking your head going, oh, it's MSNBC. <laughs> <laughs> It's the same stuff over and over and over and over again. I remember listening to Christian radio or the Catholic channel or something that leads us closer to Christ rather than so more angrily against one party or the other. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. That's your discernment and your prayer. I believe they both suck. <laughs> <laughs> we are not given good choices. <laughs> but I know that Jesus will be here. <coughs> Jesus is the one who sustains us. Jesus is the one we're called to center our lives around. Long after both of them are dead. And long after I'm dead, too. We need to be focused on the one who sustains us. We need to lead with his words. And yes, I wish the world were blazing. I wish we were all on fire with the Lord. I wish we took the opportunity to speak about him every day. To listen to his word every day. To truly understand that we're sustained by him and not some political party or some candidate that we think is going to be the best of the two. The other thing I want to mention today, some people have asked me about this mass that's happening tomorrow. Black Mass. Um, I think we have spoken way too much about it. We have given them way more advertisement than they ever thought humanly possible. Supposedly they're going to get a consecrated host. And Father Rafa said something uh, very telling yesterday. He says they have more faith in the universe than we do. 
if they truly believe that's the presence of Christ. Many Catholics don't have that faith. Yeah, we should be in prayer. Always in prayer. Against Satan and his angels that roam the earth. Not just because of some event that's happened in Atlanta. All those people doing processions and all kinds of other things. No one has even known about it. Except the crazy people that exist around the circle of life. Or death. I had an incident, a situation, when I was first here, not long after I was here. And I don't know if I told the story or not, but I, Father Miller and I were asked to go and visit a family's home. And um, the girl was sick and not doing well and having problems. And so we began conversation with her and mentioned that we would bless the house and that we would go and anoint this and pray for this young woman. So we began to pray and then we went around the house and we were using the holy water to bless the house because they had supposedly seen and heard things in the house. And uh, when the water hit this young girl, she turned away. And she flinched. And I said, we have a little problem. I said to myself, to Father Miller, I remember Father Miller was just a baby when he first came here. <laughs> um, like I was when I first came here. <laughs> and I said, we're going to have a problem. And when we began to pray over this young woman, uh, odd things began to happen. And she began to have almost like seizure-like moments. And so I told Father Miller's like this, so the young woman's other is like this. I said, put your hands on her. I said, you can't, we can't anoint somebody without touching them. I said, put your hands on her. He was hesitant. <laughs> and he did. It took four of us to hold her. She tried to bite me twice. And she began to laugh at me. Now, many people have laughed at me. <laughs> this wasn't a happy laugh. And I looked her straight in the face, and it's not the girl. And I said, I am not afraid of you. I'm a Catholic priest. I believe in Jesus Christ, and you will not win. We kept praying. And there's always a telltale sign in these moments when a person begins to pray with you, things have changed. The devil does not have power over us unless we give him that power. It's Jesus Christ. So we can be worried about a black mass going on someplace else, or, and this is, if we don't think there's other satanic things going on in the world every day, we're sadly mistaken. That's why we need to constantly be in relationship with Christ. But the devil is always on the attack, whether it be at some event in Atlanta, or in our own hearts, or in our own homes, in the divisions that exist between us. We don't think the devil's rejoicing in this division of fighting between each other. We're sadly mistaken. He's rejoicing because we're focused on two people that are running for office that have no power over us. We're avoiding the conversations of Jesus. We're spending more time watching and listening to rhetoric about politicians than focusing on Jesus. The devil's having a heyday. Not because of an event in the land, but because of our own divisions that exist within us. It's Christ that is in charge. And it's Christ we should focus on every day of our lives. Amen. For the church, may God's glory shine brightly through her service to the world, we pray.
For nations, may the Holy Spirit inspire them to replace any division with a spirit of goodwill and cooperation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those traveling the long road of grief, may they know Christ's presence and rest in the confidence that nothing can separate us from the love of God, we pray. Lord, For all of us gathered here, may the call to our, of our baptism lead us to go forth and share the good news of Jesus with others, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may our gracious Lord shine his face upon them and give them eternal peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers offered in our hearts. For the repose of the soul of Jenny Wiglet, for whom this Mass is being offered, for the prayers spoken aloud, and those offered in our hearts. We ask them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You guys fighting? <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given human hands, have made become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through this we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through this purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right in us, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with eternal hope. And so with the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending your spirit upon them like the dew, all that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took a chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we all feel, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one.
by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our Archbishop, his auxiliary bishops, the clergy, religious, and all your people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Anthony, Mary Claret, the apostles, saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Over us, Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we'll always be free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins when the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you, Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am
Grant the Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age, and prepare the gifts that are eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Anyone buy a lottery ticket to Buford this week? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody? Looking for the tithe, are you? <laughs> well, we in Buford want a lottery ticket, $203 million cash. I'm hoping it's one of my old parishioners that remembers and is <laughs> that remembers and loves me greatly. <laughs> that wasn't mean to or something. Minister of Karen, please share our Lord with those that are not able to be with us today that we be their kingdom. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is going to go in peace. If I know who they are, give them their card. No, I'll take the address. I have it here. No, 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 Blessings on it. Just... Oh, 